C'est avec une profonde tristesse euh, qu'on a appris ce matin du décès de Ian Shugart, euh, sénateur, euh, fonctionnaire, euh, euh, homme extraordinaire. C'était quelqu'un plein d'intelligence, de, de brillance, mais aussi énormément de grâce et d'humanité, de, de compassion. Il a été euh, un, un grand greffier à, à mon gouvernement, mais surtout un, un très bon ami et quelqu'un profondément dévoué euh, au service euh, et euh, aux idéaux euh, de, de ce pays. Euh, toutes, mes, toutes mes pensées sont avec ses, ses nombreux, nombreux amis euh, et évidemment avec sa famille aussi. Uh, it is with tremendous sadness uh, that we learned this morning of the passing of Ian Shugart, uh, senator, uh, public servant uh, extraordinaire, who was a man of deep, deep integrity and grace and brilliance. Uh, his impact on the public service, uh, his long, long career uh, leading us uh, as a country in so many different ways uh, was extraordinary. Um, he, uh, as, as clerk to this government, he uh, um, contributed so much. Uh, I obviously am thinking of all his friends, and of which he had so many, uh, and of course his family through this difficult time. Qu'est-ce que vous pensez du budget de l'an 1? Pouvez-vous expliquer la différence entre dépôts humanitaires et une trêve humanitaire, puis expliquer aussi pourquoi vous écartez un cessez-le-feu? Dépôts humanitaires, euh, c'est vraiment à trois buts. D'abord, de permettre euh, de l'aide euh, humanitaire de se rendre pour les gens de Gaza. Euh, c'est à permettre de sortir les otages. C'est inacceptable que Hamas continue à garder les otages. Euh, et c'est aussi une opportunité de pouvoir sortir euh, des civils, particulièrement les Canadiens et d'autres citoyens. Mais on reconnaît que l'Israël a le droit de se défendre, doit le faire en accordance avec euh, le, le, le droit humanitaire, le droit international, et on continue de, de veiller là-dessus. And it's an expression of the fact that uh, we're all in this together. And the idea that uh, that uh, Alberta might uh, not just uh, make uh, their own pensioners poorer by pulling out, but uh, impact Canadians from coast to coast is uh, coast to coast to coast is not something that. Um, most Albertans would want, let alone most Canadians. Et le budget de l'an 1, le budget de l'an 1, on parle de relations avec les provinces. Le budget de l'an 1, vous en pensez quoi? Moi, mes relations sont avec le premier ministre du Québec, François Legault. Je ne veux pas commencer à débattre des essais du Parti québécois de garder une certaine pertinence. Mais quand M. Poliev dit c'est à cause de vous que ces affaires-là arrivent parce que vous divisez le pays. Y a-tu quelque chose que Poliev ne va pas blâmer sur moi ces jours-ci? On va commencer à s'habituer. Merci. Je me demande si je peux avoir votre réaction au fait que le visa processing a été résumé avec l'Indie. Je pense que c'est un bon signe. Nous ne pensons pas que ça devrait avoir été suspendu dans le premier lieu. But there's some people that were trying to get back to their families in, in India that needed urgent processing, so I'm glad that's up and running. But um, make sure that uh, hopefully it doesn't happen again. Is this a sign of easing tensions? I would take it for, for what it's worth. Uh, our feeling is that the suspension should never have happened in the first place. So uh, it's nice for the folks that were trying to get over to, to, to India that were sometimes taking a trip of a lifetime or just trying to get back there. They'll hopefully have a little bit more of a normal process than um, than what they've seen in the last couple of weeks. Have you heard from you know people that are in that situation? What have they told you? Uh, a lot of anxiety. Um, a lot of people have been making plans. We do have uh, a flow of people that go to and from India, so it has been uh, I think an anxious time for them, uh, and, and they're worried. And you know, my job above the role I have as immigration minister is to make sure people are safe or feel safe in this country, and I think this. Uh, this really concerning diplomatic situation with India has created a lot of fear in a lot of communities. Yeah, thanks. Uh, do you think that uh, India's decision to restart visa services is a sign of easing tensions? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And do you think it's a step forward or is it uh, as much of a progress as we're going to make right now? Oh, I, I think there's, there's more progress to be made. Um, 
you know, there's, uh, there's certainly some difficult dynamics going back and forth. I was made aware of a, a tweet by somebody identifying as a major in the Indian Army that was pretty nasty uh, toward people in Canada. Uh, but uh, that's maybe a lone wolf. The, uh, you know, getting the visas open again, I mean, it's great for families, right? Uh, families here on the side of the water want to go and visit their relatives, and that's a good thing. All right. Yeah. All right. I spoke to a family that spent hundreds of thousands of dollars of their own money to both fly a relative overseas to get uh, a new treatment for glioblastoma and then uh, more than $400,000 to get that treatment in Canada. What do you say to families that are spending such great sums out of pocket to get access to drugs that haven't been approved by Health Canada? Well, I, I think, first of all, I have enormous sympathy uh, for any family that is in a circumstance where their health is compromised and they're searching for solutions. Uh, I, I can't imagine what they're going through. I can't imagine how stressful that is. Uh, I think uh, from a systems perspective here, uh, one of the things that we've been really well served by is Health Canada is seen as one of the, uh, one of the best agencies in the world in, in terms of ensuring both the safety and the efficacy of, uh, of the drugs that are approved. And it, it's, um, when you're in a desperate situation, you want that drug right away. Um, it, Health Canada, needs to ensure the rigor of its process is such that we don't make mistakes in the rush to find solutions. Now, by the same token, uh, particularly when somebody is in a really compromised position where their life is at risk, um, we do have to, to think about uh, that balancing of those risks. And that's something that I'm talking to the department about, about uh, finding, uh, well, I see your reaction, and, and my response is, is that that's a, a process of continual process improvement. So, the, so the, that reaction is that I was not aware of that, and I just wondered, does that suggest that there is some sort of significant change coming? Well, not necessarily. I mean, I, I'm just saying that, um, that I'm enormously sympathetic to somebody who is in that incredibly difficult situation, and I'm also incredibly sympathetic to the need for Health Canada to maintain rigor in our processes and to make sure that the drugs that are approved that are safe. Uh, and what that there's always a constant state of, of, of uh, process improvement and evaluation to make sure that we get that right. And I, and I want to look at particularly in instances where somebody's life is in a compromised position where they might die, um, that, the, 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 you know, the controls that we have on risk might be in a different place if somebody's life is already in a compromised position where, um, you know, they, they may have uh, no other option to survive than to try something um, that, that, um, uh, that is unusual and has higher associated risks. Would that mean in some cases harmonizing our standards with uh, the EU or the FDA? Well, I think that, you know, we, we always want to look at how we cooperate with other jurisdictions and eliminate um, duplication. Uh, we also understand that other jurisdictions might make uh, different decisions. They may more lean on supporting the market and, uh, you know, economic considerations instead of safety considerations. And uh, as you can imagine, if, if, if we get it wrong, if we end up approving something that we shouldn't approve uh, and it ends up being used uh, by Canadians and there's an injurious uh, impact and we failed to protect Canadians, it won't matter that another jurisdiction also got it wrong, people are going to fairly ask the question why we got it wrong. So we have to maintain that rigor in our process, uh, but looking at what other jurisdictions are doing, building on their science rather than being duplicative um, uh, is certainly something that we, we need to continue doing. Thank you for your time. Thanks so much.